Good afternoon, this is David Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire and we're pleased to be with you for another video. Uh, we've got a day today without wind so we thought that we would go ahead and try and shoot something that we've been asked about. Uh, people have enjoyed the stove that we made, the wood burning stove for the shelter, but they said what if you couldn't find a can out there in the bush? How could you do this naturally or to build a cook stove naturally that would cook water real fast? Well, there's a couple ways. Of course, being in Missouri, the first thing that came to my thought was stone. Uh, somebody had showed me a video of one that they made over in Scandinavia, which was a straight log, and they had notched out squarely here, put their can on top, put their wood in that notch, and it burned real well. What about stone? Can we do the same thing? Well, what I've done is I've gathered a couple of stones out of the field here. I've laid one up, and what I'm going to do is lay the second one in here as well, and that's going to give me my fire base. Now we're just doing this in our fire pit for safety reasons. Doesn't really matter where you do it. You just want to make sure that the ground underneath is uh, solid, that you don't have a lot of debris on it that you're going to burn it because this is going to get right hot. This is going to form the interior of our fire base. And what I'll do is I'll take another rock. Let's see what a good one is here. I'll take this one, set right here, and put a back wall. Now the reason that I put this second rock back here was to keep that airspace out. So now you can see that we've got a firebox in here. And what I wanted to do was to build this in something of a form of a jet stove. And uh, if you're familiar with a jet stove, a jet boil, then you know that it gets airflow from inside and pulls that air in. So how do we do that? Well, let's see. Got a couple small stones I picked up as well here. And I'm just going to put those small stones right in that opening. And then I'm going to put another flat stone on top. Now, you can see, if Tam can get on top here, that we've got the hole underneath for the air to flow in. On top, we have our firebox. So airflow will come from underneath, come up here. All that's left is to find a flat stone to put on top there. Let's see what I can do here. Switch this around a little bit, put something. We'll change it like that. Put this flat stone right on top. And there we go. Now we've got our firebox closed in. We've got a small piece here where the flames can come up. It will draw air from the front side and we would rest our cooking pot right here. So the next thing to do is let's start a fire in here. In order to do that, I'm going to take a top stone off and I'm going to build the fire right inside. So let's get the fire material gathered together and we'll be right back with you. Now before I actually get to lighting this fire, let me say a couple things. As I mentioned before, this is built on a uh, thing like a rocket stove or a jet stove, jet boil. And uh, this is a, a whole nother video in itself, but this is a rocket stove. What it does basically, you feed the fuel in the top, the air comes underneath, and then it will shoot the flame out the inner can, which is insulated around the outer can. So that is the rocket stove. This is a primitive model of the rocket stove. And one of the things that you want to do when you have wind coming, you want to set that opening into the prevailing wind. That way the wind will blow in and feed your fire. So let's get this fire started and see what we can do. It's a little windy out here, so instead of trying to use a lighter or something, I'm just going to use my old standby, which is a flint and steel, whoop, ferro rod, and cotton ball. Get this thing started right up for you. Move around here, Tam can stay right there on the fire. And uh, we just fluffed that cotton ball out a little bit. I'm going to put it into the middle of my tinder pile. A couple strikes. And we've got flame. Let's put it down into our fire hole. And we're just going to let that build for a minute. Then we'll go ahead and put some larger fuel on there. Now when I say larger fuel in a setup like this, you really don't want large fuel. 
in order to burn properly, you want to keep this very, very small. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build this fire for a minute or two with some of this small dry dead stuff. And we're going to let it begin to catch. Once it begins to catch, I'm going to get Tam to get up here so you can see where the draw is. Now that it's going a little bit, I'm actually going to put my other piece back on top. And that draw will continue. You'll see the flames shoot out here. And that's a good thing. That's what we're looking for. Just continue to feed our fire. We can feed it right now from this angle here. We could also feed it from underneath if we wanted to. And that fire should stay burning nice and hot for us. So let's get this going for a minute and we'll be right back with you. Now you can see the flames are really shooting up here and this fire is going to tend to burn against this back wall because that airflow comes in and up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to feed a little bit more in there so I got plenty of small wood. You can see I'm just using stuff about a quarter to a half inch. And if I need to get some extra air in there I can always pull this wall off and that will allow the flames to get a little extra air. And what I'm going to do is take my water, my water boiler and uh, fill it up with water here and we're just going to place that on the fire. Now these rocks are a little bit uneven so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick a couple of sticks in here. They'll ignite, that's okay, not a big problem. And then I'm going to stick my canteen right on top of those. Pull this rock in a little bit and let's see how that boils up. So once that starts to boil, we'll be back with you. Again, I can feed right in the side here next to my canteen, or I can feed from underneath. Or if I have to, I can take this back rock off the firewall, and I can feed right there. But this is going to cook this pretty quickly. I'm guessing probably about five, seven minutes. So let's put a timer on it and see what happens. We've let this been going now for about uh, six minutes, I guess, five, six minutes. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this Gio bottle off of here and I'm going to put a little more wood in there. The reason I took it off, I don't have to take it off, but I wanted to show you inside there how those flames are just shooting up through that opening. That's the only place for the heat and the flames to escape. So they're surrounding this bottle and we're going to have this water boiling in just a second here. Got to be careful. Don't want to lose our water there. So a couple more minutes. And we'll be back with you. Now you can see with this tinder in here, this small stuff, those flames are just really shooting out of there. And again, I can just stick the tinder down in here. And that's going to keep burning. Remember, it's the back edge that's the hottest on this. And uh, we've got just about... We're about seven and a half minutes right now on this being on the fire. See? So it's just about ready. Well, you can see that the water's boiling now, so I'm just going to throw my tea bag in there and pull that thing off the water, off the fire. And you can see that flame has built a real good bed of coals in there and uh, lots of flames. So that's a good way to make a rocket stove, a quick cooking stove out there. We had about eight minutes total, eight and a half minutes to boil. Not too awful bad. This is David Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Join us again for another video, and thanks again for all of your support. Have a great day. Mmm, that's good.